Hey guys, happy Wednesday. I hope everybody's doing well out there today. Uh, today I want to take a look at a software that's, um, I, I've been kind of going back and forth on a little bit because um, I really, really like how it looks. Uh, it claims to be the most powerful and extensible open source wiki software available. Um, but in the Docker realm, uh, there's some stuff that's still kind of limited and still being developed and added. So uh, while it's kind of limited now, I wanted to kind of get in early to show you what it looks like. Um, so you can kind of, you follow along as it uh, grows and develops that sort of thing. So what we're gonna take a look at today is something called wiki.js. So if we take a look at their website, uh, here we can see uh, kind of a general idea of what it looks like uh, from the back end here. Uh, of course, you can install it anywhere. They've got all kinds of options for Docker and Heroku and Kubernetes and Mac and Windows. Uh, so lots of different ways to install this. Of course, we're gonna take a look at Docker, more specifically the Linux server version of this that they've created. Um, so we can actually just kind of jump into this. I will have uh, this wiki uh, JS linked in the description down below. Uh, of course, everything on here will be linked uh, in the description down below as well. Uh, so if we jump over here, we can see that this is what uh, our, our Docker Compose is going to look like for our stack. And then of course, if we copy this and we jump over here to Portainer and go to Stacks. Of course, we'll wanna add a new stack and just paste that in there. And uh, then we'll give it a name like so. So this is all pretty standard stuff as far as uh, the, the stack is concerned. Our, our image is coming from Linux server. Our container name is wiki.js. Our PUID and PGID, uh, this one's a little different than normal. Uh, normally we would jump in and grab uh, our ID via SSH. Uh, this time uh, I'm gonna leave it as it currently is. This is my PUID and PGID for this system, but I wanna show you how this fails and kind of how to get around it at first. Uh, so below that, of course, we've got our time zone. Uh, you'll wanna make that uh, your time zone wherever you happen to be. Uh, below that, we've got some volumes, uh, one for config and one for data. Uh, config, of course, that's where all your configuration files are gonna go. And then your data folder, that's where, as you're uploading pictures and, and assets to your wiki, uh, those will be stored somewhere else. Um, and so definitely make sure you've got uh, storage space for both of those volumes, wherever you happen to put them. Uh, below that, we've got port 3000. Of course, if you're already using port 3000, and let's say you wanted to use port 4500, uh, you would just change it like that. Uh, I'm gonna change that back and then restart unless stopped. Very, very standard stuff there. So uh, basically at this point, once you've got all of this done, all you've gotta do is scroll down, click on deploy the stack. This should go pretty quick for me as I've already got the image downloaded. So uh, this will take longer for you on your first install because you're gonna have to download that image. And just so you know, uh, the image for uh, Wiki.js is about 308 megabytes. So not huge, uh, definitely not nearly what Node.js is there, uh, or what Node is rather. So uh, let's go back to our stack and open up Wiki.js and let's take a look here uh, this says browse to this to complete the setup. Now, of course, here's the thing. If you change that to 4,500, this would still say 3,000. It's hard coded into the script. It's not gonna pull uh, what you told it to be, the, the port to be. So I uh, just know that. Um, so we'll go back and we'll go ahead and click on right here. Give this just a second. So now it's asking us to set some stuff up. And here in just a second is where that failure is going to occur that I mentioned earlier. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and put in uh, my uh, email address here, oops, reviews.com, and my very insecure password. And uh, I am gonna change this uh, to be uh, dbtech.xyz, uh, because we are going to attach this to a domain name, uh, and we're gonna cover that here in just a moment. But I just wanted to get the site URL in there um, and then you can allow telemetry. That's where they're going to take anonymous data uh, to help improve their software. Uh, you can turn that on and off if you'd like, uh, whichever way is perfectly fine. It should not affect your, uh, your user experience here at all. So now that we've filled all of this in, we're gonna click install, but it's gonna throw an error here in just a moment saying that it doesn't have permission to make this directory. Uh, the way I have found to get around that is actually go back over to your editor under stacks change your PUID and PGID to zero. That's for root, that's your root access, PUID, PGID. So go ahead and click update. Uh, we'll give this a second to redeploy. Now we're good to go. And now what we can do is click install. We'll give this just a moment to do its thing. 
Let's go back into here. Let's try that again. Oops. And we'll click install here. All right, so installation was complete. Now it's gonna go ahead and redirect us and it'll ask us to log in. Uh, they do a lot with animations in here, I've noticed, which I kind of dig. Uh, so now we can create a homepage if you want to do that. And what I like about this is there are a few different ways you can do this. Uh, here you can see that like this API docs is coming soon. Blog is coming soon. Uh, Excel is coming soon. So there's a lot of stuff that's coming soon, but there are a few different ways that you can uh, set up your homepage or any page that you'd like to set up. Uh, I'm gonna use the visual editor. Uh, I'm gonna call this um, DB Tech Wiki Home, oops, homepage. This is the homepage. Um, and then you can uh, set up your, your locale. Uh, well, for right now, it's just set up to be English. Uh, the path is home. You can change that if you'd like to as well. Uh, you can add tags, like it says, to categorize your pages and make them easier to find. Um, scheduling, uh, coming soon. Scripts, uh, not accessible. Social, coming soon. Uh, so right now, for the time being, we'll just click OK. And then uh, we'll go ahead and just grab some text. Oops, lipsum, like so. Uh, and of course, this is just lipsum. Uh, if you're interested in lipsum, um, this is this is old school, just uh, typeset stuff uh, to to decide, to kind of figure out what a page will look like with just text that isn't real text, uh, just to kind of fill in some blanks. So we'll go ahead and paste that in there. Um, i tell you what, let's, um, actually, you know what, let's do this. Like so, and we'll go ahead and make that like a block quote. And uh, over, over here, uh, we'll go ahead and add an image and we'll say uh, browse. We'll go ahead and grab that and we'll say upload. So now it's uploading. Uh, I wanna make sure that it aligns to the right, like so. Um, and we'll click there and we'll click insert. Oops, ah, that's fine. And then we'll go ahead and click on create. <clears throat> So creating uh, wiki pages on here, very, very easy. Uh, like I said, there's a few different ways to do it. You can use Markdown, you can use HTML, you can use code, you can use uh, the WYSIWYG editor, whatever you wanna do, lots of different ways to do that. So uh, so there we've gone ahead and created a page. Uh, what I wanna do though is actually go into the back end, uh, go to administration. And just to give you an idea of all of the different things in the back end that you can take a look at, um, you can uh, obviously change the URL. Of course, we're still going to attach or, or, or go after that here in just a moment. Uh, we can change this to be a DB Tech uh, Wiki. Uh, we can change this. Uh, I want to use that and it'll say insert. Uh, company and organization name will be DB Tech. Uh, we'll say all rights reserved. Um, so we can kind of fill in all of that. Uh, we can decide if we want comments on or off. Uh, there is more, there are more options for comments later on. So we'll go ahead and save that. And um, here you can see that it automatically updated here. Uh, it should have, I believe, updated, yep, right up here in the title as well. Uh, so locale, you can change uh, whatever languages you want. Um, lots of options there. Uh, navigation, uh, you can uh, use all kinds of different navigation here if you wanna do that. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click apply there. Uh, pages, you can list these out. Uh, you can visualize your pages as far. Um, there's nothing there yet because we've only got one page, so there's not much to do there. Tags, categories, if, you had, if you've been using tags, you could see them all here. Uh, your theme, uh, you can set the theme uh, just to this for right now, uh, but you can turn dark mode on uh, if you wanna do that. There's a few different options for uh, icons, whether it's material design icons or font awesome, couple of options there. Go ahead and click apply. Uh, groups and users, uh, if you wanted to set those up, you can do those as well. Um, analytics, there are lots of analytics that you can attach. Uh, Google Analytics is probably the most standard where you would just put your UA code right there and it would fill in the rest of your analytics. Uh, authentication, lots of different ways to log in. Uh, of course, for you know like Facebook login, you need to set up a Facebook app and a secret, that sort of thing in order to do that. Uh, but it gives you all of the information here you need to set up your app. 
Uh, and of course, there's lots of different ways you can do this, whether it's through, uh, you could do it through Google, you could do it through GitLab, GitHub, lots of different ways to log in. Comments, uh, you can use the built-in, you can use Discuss, Comento, uh, lots of ways to do that as well. Uh, extensions, if you wanted to do that, you could install other extensions as well. How, uh, let's see, rendering, how do you want to render the pages, uh, search engine, uh, lots of different ways to search. Storage, uh, you should be able to, yep, attach additional storage here. Uh, basically, a non-attached storage, uh, remote storage, I guess, is the better thing for that. There's also, there also is local storage here. Uh, API access in case you want to generate an API key and uh, do things with this remotely. Mail, uh, I, I highly encourage you to set this up. Uh, this is how your your system will send you emails. Uh, so I would uh, I would definitely set up an email address specific to this. Uh, put all your information in here. So if you lose your username or or somebody signs up or something like that, uh, you can get system emails. So definitely set this up. Uh, so like if you wanted to use a Gmail address, you'd put in, you know, like uh, DB tech, and then you'd put in, you know, your email address and this would be smtp.gmail.com. Oops, I can't type this morning. And that was 465. And then you would put in your username and password there. And then you would click uh, apply. And if everything worked, then you can send yourself emails from here. Security, um, they've got, uh, different things in here for uh, additional security on your site. I definitely dig that. Uh, SSL, uh, you've got one. Uh, don't worry about this saying disabled. You will have one uh, when we set up our domain name. Uh, system info, uh, here we've got uh, the system that it's on. Uh, four cores, four gigs of RAM. Uh, it's in Docker, so that's all good. Utilities here, uh, authentication, so you can generate new keys. Um, and then developer tools, uh, flags, uh, so you can turn uh, debugging on and logging and that's missing. So we'll go back. So that's basically all there is to the setup portion of wiki.js. So in order to make this accessible from the internet, you will want to attach this to a domain name. And I want to say thank you to Porkbun for sponsoring this video. Uh, I've been using Porkbun for a couple of years and the reason for that is pretty simple for me. Uh, typically their first year domain registrations are very cheap. Uh, you can usually pick up a, do a .com for just a couple of bucks. And what's even better than getting a domain name very, very cheap is they include domain privacy for free. Uh, most of the registrars you go to to buy a domain name, uh, you might be able to get a domain name for three or four bucks, but they're going to make your email address, well, your name, your email address, your home address, and your phone number accessible to the public so that people can contact you regarding your domain or your website or whatever the case may be. Pork Bun includes domain privacy for free. So I really dig that the, the, the domains from Pork Bun are much cheaper and they really stepped up and made sure that all of your privacy is taken very, very seriously. So do me a favor, there will be a link in the description where you can jump over to Pork Bun and pick up your domain name for a reduced cost and get domain privacy for free. So in order to get this set up on a domain name, of course, the first thing we need is a domain name. And I like to use uh, Cloudflare to help uh, with a bit of extra security from DDoS protection, uh, IP address obfuscation, all kinds of great stuff in here. Plus they offer free SSLs. So uh, what we're gonna do, I've already got dbtech.xyz set up. So what I'm gonna do is come over here. I'm gonna set up a C name. Uh, and I'm gonna say uh, wiki, and I'm gonna say at, because that's going to fill in my domain name by default. And I'm gonna change this to DNS only, and then I'll click save. Okay, so now that we've got our domain name set up, the next thing we need to do is come over here to Nginx Proxy Manager. Uh, here we can see that, that I've already got three applications set up and running. The next thing we'll do is we'll set up a proxy host. We're gonna say wiki.dbtech.xyz. Uh, I'm gonna say 192.168.1.1, oh. I changed that 68.18, I believe. Let me verify that. Uh, let's drag this up here. I'm gonna say ping uh, tanix.local 68.18, that is correct. And then we need to make sure that we find the right port number, which is 3000 in this case. So I'm gonna set that to 3000. I'm gonna block common exploits, we'll go to SSL. We're gonna request a new SSL. Check those and check that and we'll click save. We'll give this just a moment here to uh, set up the SSL through Let's Encrypt. 
So now that we've got that, we're going to come down here. This is the one I'm looking for. I can tell because it's got the correct date on there. So what we'll do is we'll come over here to edit, go to SSL. We're going to force those again and click save. And then we'll go ahead and click the link there. And just like that, now we're accessing our wiki on a secure domain name. Uh, I guess the one last thing we want to do here is actually come over here and switch this from DNS only to proxied and click save. You want to give that just a couple of minutes. Uh, while it's saying DNS only, uh, your IP address will be vulnerable. Uh, once you switch it to proxy, you'll want to wait just a couple of minutes uh, and then it will switch your IP address out for one of their IP addresses and uh, will make it much harder for people to try to uh, attack your domain names via your IP address because they won't be able to find it because they'll find a Cloudflare IP address instead of your home IP address. So uh, that's kind of the process of going through and setting up wiki.js as your own little uh, self-hosted wiki service. I hope you found the video helpful. Uh, like I said, all of this stuff will be available in the description down below, linked into a blog post uh, where you can go check all of that out. Uh, while you're down there, there are like, a couple of links uh, that you can use to support the channel. One is a uh, coffee link that's uh, like a one-time tip jar uh, where you can uh, just send me a couple of bucks to say thanks for the video. Or uh, there is, there's also a Patreon link uh, where there are four different levels of subscription. Uh, the three, five, and ten dollar levels will give you access to my content early uh, when I make it available early before it goes live to the general public. The five and ten dollar levels will give you access to a patrons only discord server uh, where we can hang out and chat about whatever you'd like to chat about. But I think with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap things up here. As always, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.